Hey guys, going on? Megan here. Here are 20 things that destroy testosterone based on the scientific literature and my over 20 years of experience. Let's get started. A low carb diet that lowers testosterone. It doesn't destroy testosterone and it does not kill testosterone, right? This being the worst, obviously, but it does lower testosterone. There's a ton of studies on this, even a meta-analysis on this. You do not want to eat a low-carb diet, especially if you're an athlete or if you train a lot, you're very active, you definitely want to avoid a low-carb diet for many reasons. A low-carb diet will increase cortisol, lower thyroid hormones, lower glycogen stores, lower IGF-1. I could go on and on, guys. If you train a lot, if you're very active, avoid a low-carb diet. A low-carb diet can also drastically increase sex hormone binding globulin, which in turn is going to lower your free testosterone. Next, not walking enough, right? Being sedentary and not having a lot of steps. Guys, if you're walking less than eight to 10,000 steps a day, you're in trouble, right? A sedentary lifestyle through many pathways is going to lower testosterone. It's not going to destroy testosterone, but it's definitely going to lower it. And that's mainly because you're going to have high cortisol levels, high inflammation, poor blood flow, and obviously horrible cardiovascular health. Next, under eating. Under eating is going to destroy testosterone. If you do not eat enough relative to your lean body mass, of course, your brain is not going to send a signal, obviously luteinizing hormone and gonadotropin releasing hormone to increase testosterone production because the body, the brain to be specific, is going to switch from reproduction mode to survival mode. It's just common sense. It's evolutionary biology. If you are not getting enough calories or if you fast for too long, your body will reduce testosterone production. Your hypothalamus very carefully tracks the amount of glucose in your bloodstream and your overall caloric balance before it decides to upregulate all of your reproduction hormones. Next, avoiding exposure to women, meaning not looking at attractive women, not interacting with attractive women. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about just exposure to attractive women. The science on this is very clear on humans and on animals. It does lower testosterone. It's not going to destroy it, but it significantly lowers testosterone. In fact, the difference is so large that in studies that compare men who are in all boys schools compared to men who are, you know, in schools where they allow women, there's a huge difference in testosterone levels. Because once again, your brain is not stupid. Guy. Your brain is not going to release luteinizing hormone and GnRH if it does not have to, right? The body does not like wasting its resources. And obviously, increasing testosterone production is very, very expensive, both in its production and its effects on bodily tissues which is why the body is very careful in timing the release of testosterone. So if you're not exposed to women, if they, remember guys, testosterone evolved for reproduction, right? Forget what anybody told you. Testosterone evolved for reproduction, for sex. It did not evolve for muscle and for energy and all that. Those are just things that help you get sex, right? If you look at the evolutionary uh, history of the human race, right? So if the brain feels like you have no access to sex or there's no reason to increase testosterone, it's going to give you just enough testosterone to live by, right? To make it through. We see the same in the animal kingdom. When you put male animals around females, especially if they're in heat, their testosterone levels go through the roof. If you remove the male animals from around females, their testosterone levels go back down. Common sense. So expose yourself to attractive females. Now, as far as ugly females, I have no idea. I've said this before. There's no research on what happens if you surround yourself <laughs> with, with, ugly, with ugly women. Um, but I would assume you're not going to get a big increase in testosterone, right? Again, we don't have a lot of <laughs> randomized control trials on what happens if you uh, expose a bunch of guys to uh, ugly bitches. But anyway, next, beating your meat. That one is a myth. Yes, masturbation does not reduce testosterone. Contrary to what all these clown influencers told you, the no fab guys, the semen retention guys, guys, it is all BS. There is so, so much literature on the relationship between sexual acts, so that includes masturbation, watching porn, having sex, and testosterone. And the vast majority of studies, if not all, show an increase in testosterone. I, could, I already went over those studies. You guys could check my old videos. And if you want, I can make future videos. It is one of the biggest myths of the most recent years. In some studies, masturbation increased testosterone up to 15 to 20 percent. In other studies, having sex increased testosterone up to 109 percent. I've covered that study in the past. And in many studies, Two of which are covered on this channel. Just looking at porn, looking at women, or looking at people having sex, increased testosterone at least 10%. Which, once again, makes sense. The brain evolved to release testosterone when it thinks that you're about to engage in sexual acts. Now, that does not mean go out there and beat your meat all day. I made, a, I made many videos on no fat and semen retention. Watch the video before you jump to conclusions. I'm not saying you should go out there and masturbate all day because it temporarily increases testosterone, right? Because there's an inverted U-curve to everything, right? If you masturbate all day, obviously, 
you're going to keep your prolactin levels constantly elevated. Yes, it's going to go back down, but if you keep beating your meat, you're going to upregulate prolactin all day long, and that's obviously going to put you in a lazy, low energy state. Not to mention that you'll be depleting a lot of your key micronutrients. So even though I'm against no fab and I'm against all this semen retention bullshit, at the same time, that does not mean that you should overdo it, right? I believe in what I jokingly call intermittent fapping, right? You want to fap? Fine. Make sure you do it after your daily routine is complete, after you're done conquering your day, after you're done doing whatever else you have to do to improve as a man. Do it at night before you go to bed. Now, if you have a girl, great. Clap her cheeks, right? If you don't and you can't focus, guys, be your meat, right? Don't This whole no fat movement is such BS. Again, I don't want to derail this video, so watch my video on no fat, where I completely destroy that myth using both scientific evidence and empirical evidence. Now, if you're addicted to porn, that's a whole different thing, right? Porn addiction is horrible. Obviously, addiction to anything is horrible, right? So if you're addicted to porn, then again, watch my video where I explain the details. In short, Porn addiction is not the problem. It is the symptom. It is a symptom of a bigger issue. I've been saying that for years. Watch the video where I go into details. Anyway, next. Not eating enough micronutrients, right? So not eating enough vitamins, minerals, especially zinc, boron, magnesium, the B vitamins, choline, copper, selenium. Long story short, not eating a micronutrient-rich diet. And again, I'm talking about from food, not from supplements, from foods. This one kills testosterone. It is one of the worst things, if not the worst thing you could do if you're trying to optimize your male hormones. Your body cannot make any, I repeat, any of your key hormones. Testosterone, even cortisol, even estradiol, DHT, pregnenolone, progesterone. Your body cannot make any of those hormones without the cofactors that the enzymes actually need. And what are those cofactors? Vitamins and minerals. In fact, a zinc deficiency alone was enough to create up to a 300% difference in testosterone levels. And I've covered that study in the past. Just type zinc testosterone in my channel and you'll find it, right? And that's just one micronutrient. Imagine if you're deficient in boron, potassium, calcium, you guys are deficient in almost anything, right? So fix your micronutrient deficiencies. Eat a lot of nutrient-dense meats, fruits, and veggies. Next, chronic stress. This one destroys testosterone right? Not acute stress, chronic stress, meaning stress that's obviously prolonged, you know, you stressed out all day, a lot of anxiety, that is going to violate your testosterone levels for obvious reasons, right? Your body's going to start making a ton of cortisol, and cortisol and testosterone not only they antagonize each other, but they are made from the same precursors, right? Which is obviously cholesterol and pregnenolone. Your body's also going to be deficient in progesterone, which again, you know, just like pregnenolone is a precursor for cortisol. So there are so many ways that constantly being stressed destroys testosterone production. Next, being submissive to authority. That actually lowers testosterone. A lot of literature on this as well, which obviously makes sense. This is because we evolved as social creatures. So whenever somebody has authority over you, your body wants to actually lower your testosterone levels, increase your cortisol so that you assume a submissive stance right so that you do not confront the person anybody does that obviously to avoid social isolation to avoid rejection and to avoid obviously physical damage right but being submissive to someone or something actually lowers testosterone levels that's why i would tell you guys submit to no one right i'm not talking i'm not telling you guys to go out there and break the law obviously not the law is there for a reason right but submit to no one not politicians not religious figures not humans if you want to believe in a higher power, you want to be spiritual, that's fine. I got nothing against that, but you guys already know my stance on organized religion, right? So BS. All right, next, not getting enough sunlight. That actually destroys testosterone for two reasons, because you need sunlight, one, to your eyes. Obviously, morning sunlight is needed for luteinizing hormone production, as well as fixing your circadian rhythm, so getting enough melatonin and night, blah, 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 blah. But you also need sunlight to your skin, obviously for vitamin D. Right. And there's also other pathways to which sunlight, when it comes in contact with your skin, increases testosterone production. One of them is the P53 gene, I believe. I think I made videos about that. Watch my long video on sunlight that I made over three years ago. Right. And most of you mofos are not getting enough sunlight. In fact, sunlight is so crucial that among certain animals, it is precisely what regulates mating season. Right. Especially red deer. Right. If they don't get enough sunlight then the body does not produce enough testosterone and they don't get the typical, you know, growth of antlers and a big neck. All the things that come from high testosterone right before the mating season. Long story short, get plenty of sunlight, guys. Next, drinking a lot of alcohol that actually destroys testosterone. Now, short term, it might increase testosterone, but that's not because it's increasing production of tea It's because it's temporarily lowering 
the excretion of testosterone, the removal of testosterone, because obviously your liver is too busy having to detox the motherfucker, right? So, so alcohol, short term, you might get a slight increase in testosterone, but long term, it will destroy your T levels, mainly through inflammation and oxidative stress and a whole bunch of issues. Next, smoking. Smoking lowers testosterone. The reason why it's not higher is because the research is mixed. Again, it's very similar to alcohol where short term, where in some cases it does increase testosterone a bit. It also increases DHT. But in a few cases where studies have reported higher testosterone levels in smokers, it's mainly through associations, right? It was not an RCT. It was not a randomized control trial. It was mainly through association, meaning men with high testosterone do tend to take more risk and they do tend to smoke more. Right, so it's not the smoking that increases the testosterone. It's just that high testosterone men tend to smoke more and tend to take more risks. Right, but smoking long term obviously lowers your testosterone because again the oxidative stress, the inflammation, the cortisol, the whole nine yards. Next, not having sex, not being sexually active lowers testosterone. Again, the research is very clear on that. Right, so so much for the semen retention motherfuckers out there who keep lying to you guys. Again, stop listening to these clowns out there who keep lying to you in spite of decades of scientific research showing the opposite, right? Not having sex, not being sexually active, lowers testosterone for the same reason that I mentioned earlier, right? The body doesn't like to waste resources. Why would it increase your testosterone if it's just going to go to waste? Now, if you're not sexually active, but you expose yourself to females, then yeah, the body will temporarily increase your testosterone levels to make you do the things that are necessary to obviously obtain a mate. But if you go a very, very long time without clapping cheeks, yeah, the body's like, man, fuck you. You're not going to pass on these genes. All right, next, not working out obviously lowers testosterone, right? It doesn't destroy testosterone. There's a lot of people that have high testosterone levels and they probably work out once or twice a week, right? So strength training does increase testosterone, but it's mainly short term depending on the workout. If it's high volume, short rest periods, then yeah, it's going to increase testosterone up to 130% in one study, which is one of the biggest increases. And long term, it does increase testosterone a bit as well, but it's mainly indirectly it's because, again, you have more muscle mass, you have more androgen receptors, your inflammation is lower, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to avoid the technical terms. But to be brief, not training, resistance training, that is, does lower testosterone, especially as you age. Next, watching porn. Again, I mentioned that earlier. That is actually a myth. Yep. In every study that looked at men consuming pornography or explicit material, testosterone actually increase not decrease and i already explained why and that's because looking at attractive women once again increases dopamine increases luteinizing hormone increases gnrh and obviously when you increase dopamine you lower prolactin not to mention that the catecholamines you know dopamine or epinephrine things like that also go to the testicles and directly increase intracellular camp which kicks off the testosterone production pathway so watching pornography actually increases testosterone as crazy as it sounds but once again like i said before that does not mean you should go out there and become addicted to porn because again inverted u curve becoming addicted to anything is going to eventually lower your testosterone indirectly right so do not become addicted to porn i repeat do not become addicted to porn in fact don't become addicted to anything next eating a very 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 high protein diet right not just a high protein diet because that's actually recommended right but an excessively high protein diet that has been shown to actually destroy testosterone, a huge decrease, up to 35%, I believe. I think I made a video about that. So just type protein testosterone. And that's not just from one or two studies, from several studies, right? And the reason is simple. One, if you eat way too much protein, that means you're not getting enough healthy fats. You're not getting enough carbohydrates, which obviously is going to lower testosterone. The second reason is because your body is going to have too much ammonia and your liver is going to have to lower testosterone and increase cortisol in order to upregulate the urea cycle right so don't overdo it with protein you do want to eat a high protein diet right like i say one gram per pound of body weight lean body mass of course if you're obese but having significantly more than that is counterproductive right because you're not going to have enough room for fats and obviously carbohydrates next eating junk food so that's a lot of seed oils a lot of artificial sugar a lot of trans fats that kills testosterone through every pathway you could think about it lowers luteinizing hormone it lowers gnrh it lowers testicular production increases inflammation oxidative stress advanced glycation end products i mean holy cow that not to mention it also increases your body fat over time which increases aromatase leading to more estradiol right the main estrogen and through negative feedback loop goes back to your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland and lowers lh all over again right so there are so many ways junk food kills your testosterone guys next drugs right taking a lot of drugs not including caffeine of course 
obviously lowers your testosterone levels. And I put it at lowers because it depends on the drug, right? Some drugs completely crush testosterone, some increase testosterone, and some are right there in the middle, right? But overall, taking drugs, apart from caffeine, which obviously is also a drug, lowers testosterone, especially if you're taking opioids, right? If you're taking opioids or anything like heroin or, or other painkillers, yeah, that lowers testosterone a lot. Next, not getting enough sleep. That obviously kills testosterone. Hands down, there is no debate about it. Tons and tons and tons of studies on this, right? People who sleep less than five hours a day can have up to two to three times less testosterone than people who sleep seven to eight hours a day or more. Huge difference. And that's because, again, most of your testosterone is produced at night during your REM sleep stages, especially the first REM sleep cycle. So not only you should sleep more, but the quality of your sleep also matters. Go to bed early, guys. You should be in bed by 10 p.m. at the latest. Next, overeating. Overeating destroys testosterone, right? Again, there's an inverted U curve to everything, meaning if you start overeating, at first you're going to get an increase in testosterone because the body's getting all these calories, all the glucose. The body's thinking, yeah, it's time to reproduce. But eventually that's going to lead to higher body fat. And as I mentioned earlier, higher body fat is going to produce more aromatase, which is going to convert your testosterone to estrogens, which obviously lowers your testosterone level, right? So avoid overeating. If you clean bulking, again, you don't need more than a 500 calorie surplus, maybe 250 to 300. But try not to overeat. Again, unless you're malnourished some shit. The more body fat you put on, the higher your BMI, the lower your testosterone almost every single time. Ton of studies on this. Next, eating a vegan diet. That actually lowers testosterone, right? And the main reason is because you're obviously getting less animal fats. You're getting less saturated fats. You're getting less cholesterol. You're getting less high-quality amino acids, such as leucine. And obviously, if you know alanine and tyrosine, which are needed to make dopamine, one of the main inhibitors of prolactin, I can go on and on, right? But if you look at most studies comparing a vegan diet, a vegetarian diet, and an animal-based or balanced diet, the vegan group almost always has lower testosterone levels. Now, of course, you could find one or two studies that shows the opposite or mixed results, but you never look at one or two studies to make a conclusion. I've told you guys many times, you want to look at the entire literature, the entire body of evidence. And when you do, you will see that vegan diets, primarily because they're so low in fats and also because they're so high in phytic acid, which lowers zinc absorption, tend to produce lower testosterone levels on average. There's always going to be exceptions, obviously. Next, eating a very low-fat diet. And I put a bodybuilder here, I put Jake Cutler, because bodybuilders are notorious for promoting these very low-fat diets where you're eating like 50 grams of fats or 20 grams of fats. And obviously, it works for them because they're injecting testosterone. The body does not need to produce testosterone. So very low-fat diets kill testosterone. This has been studied over and over and over again. Right, and obviously the reason is simple. If you're eating a low-fat diet, that means you're not getting enough saturated fats. You're not getting enough monounsaturated fats. You're probably not getting enough omega threes, and all of these things play a huge role in testosterone production. If you want to know the, the technical reasons why and the mechanisms of action, watch my videos on fat and testosterone, where I go into the nerdy details. Next, plastics, BPA, estrogenic compounds—they lower testosterone, right? Now, there's a lot of fear monging. People blow it out of proportion. Yes, they are bad. They do lower testosterone, but nowhere as much as the other items up there, right? Um, we are all surrounded by plastics and BPAs and all that stuff, but, but there are still people walking around with very high testosterone levels naturally, right? So as long as you're doing all the other things on the list, you can offset a lot of the negative effects of BPAs and plastics and estrogenic compounds, especially if your diet is rich in micronutrients and you try your best to lower inflammation. But you should still try your best to avoid plastics as much as you can. Try to drink from glass containers, the whole nine yards. Next, inflammation, right? So anything that causes chronic inflammation, I'm not talking about inflammation from training, right? I'm talking about inflammation from toxins, from eating shit foods, from being sick, obviously, from taking drugs, anything that creates a long-lasting immune response is going to kill testosterone. In fact, it is one of the largest, one of the biggest reasons why testosterone levels have been declining like crazy over the last generations, right? We are chronically inflamed because of all the reasons that I mentioned earlier, right? Our CRP levels are through the roof. And remember what I said earlier, if your body has to focus on survival, it no longer prioritizes reproduction. So testosterone goes down and actually estradiol, right, the main estrogen, goes up. And one of the reasons is because testosterone is actually anti-inflammatory and estrogens are pro-inflammatory. So whenever you inflame, your body has to lower T and increase estradiol 
in order to keep you alive. Next, eating a lot of soy. So tofu, any soy products. That one, it depends. I know this is a shocker to a lot of people, but again, I got to be objective. Based on the entire body of literature, some studies show a decrease in testosterone, a drop in DHT levels, which is the most powerful androgen, obviously. But some studies also show a mixed response, right? And the reason for that is because there are too many confounding factors, right? People that eat a lot of soy, right? So it really depends. The science is not conclusive, but it's not worth the risk, in my opinion, right? To me, there's more than enough studies showing negative outcomes from eating too much soy, not to mention the phytoestrogens and all that stuff. So, so better be safe than sorry, in my opinion, and just avoid it. And last but not least, not competing. That destroys testosterone remember guys the two biggest increases in testosterone that we've ever seen in the literature are from sex that was over 109 percent increase and the second one if you watch my videos you wouldn't know what that one is competition it doesn't have to be physical it doesn't have to be fighting any time you compete for status your body pumps out a ton of testosterone. The largest increase, I believe it was over 400% or 600%. I made a video about it, so check it out. Just type competition in testosterone, but it is one of the largest increases in testosterone that we've ever seen. And the guys were just playing chess, right? There's also studies showing what happens when you compete in MMA, when you compete in soccer, when you compete, anytime you're competing for status and you obviously take it seriously, your body pumps out testosterone like crazy. So the reverse is also true. Not engaging in frequent competitions, not trying to move up the social ladder, not trying to increase your status, does keep your testosterone levels in a very low range. All right, guys, hope this video helps. There's so much I wanted to say, but I had to keep the video short and not technical because of beginners. So give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and grab a copy of the ebook if you want to support the channel. I'm out of here.